<coughs> Mr Deputy Speaker, I rise to speak in support of the State Development Infrastructure and Planning Red Tape Reduction and Other Legislation Bill 2014. The package of reforms presented in this bill reduces unnecessary red and green tape and avoids legislative duplication. The bill proposes a number of important repeals. Firstly, the repeal of the Clean Coal Technology Special Agreement Act of 2007. Secondly, uh, the bill, if enacted, will repeal the Eagle Farm Racecourse Act of 1998. Uh, next up, it is proposed to repeal the, the, the Gural, Gural Mundy Secure Landfill Agreement Act of 1992 to free up an unused and wasted parcel of land located near Miles. And finally, the bill proposes to repeal the repeal of the Racing Venues Development Act of 1982, which was established to provide racing venues to be placed under the control of trustees. On 1 July 2003, the former government approved the transfer of responsibility for the Parklands Gold Coast venue to trustees appointed under the Racing Venues Act. Since then, Economic Development Queensland has taken over responsibility of the site for the purpose of constructing the Commonwealth Games Athletes Village and the Parklands Trust established under the Racing Venues Act has been wound up. As Parklands Gold Coast was the only remaining racing venue on lands held by the state, the Racing Venues Act is no longer required and may be repealed. In addition to repealing redundant acts, the bill will streamline processes for industry wanting to develop in Queensland. These streamlined processes are proof this government is committed to Queensland's economic growth. For example, the amendments to just one act, the Economic Development Act, will make a substantial number of improvements to the development processes in Queensland that will, be, that, that will more than undoubtedly be welcomed by industry. These amendments will clar clarify the role of the Economic Development Fund to clear up confusion about the role of the fund in terms of who is required to pay certain monies into the fund. The ability to declare provisional priority development areas will be improved by removing the impediment uh, that provisional area has to be consistent with the local government planning scheme. The bill includes provisions also that allow community infrastructure designation to be made in a priority development area to support the purpose of uh, the Economic Development Act of providing development for community purposes. It also provides provisions that will allow land use plans for the relevant priority development area in the development scheme to be amended. Currently the Minister for Economic Development Queensland is able to make land use plans but can only amend these, plan these land use plans down the track. Uh, if it is necessary to ensure the implementation of the development, that the implementation of the development scheme complies with the Economic Development Act or to prevent or minimise the significant risk of environmental harm uh, or serious adverse cultural, economic or social conditions occurring in that relevant priority development area. Um, finally, the proposed amendments to the Economic Development Act provide a mechanism to fund infrastructure costs required to support priority development. Sorry, Mike. Um, I'm particularly pleased, however, to note also that the bill addresses the ongoing problem uh, that, that has been experienced on the Gold Coast in respect of party houses. Uh, this, bill amends, uh, th this bill includes amendments to the, to the Sustainable Planning Act of 2009 to allow local governments to regulate party houses uh, in land use and um, planning and development. The incidence of party houses and the effects on neighbouring communities has been reported to occur not only on the Gold Coast, but on the Sunshine Coast, Noosa, Stradbroke Island and in Cairns. This issue has been raised repeatedly by local members of par parliament and members of the public and media. Over the past few years, there have been a number of state and local government interventions commenced, actioned or implemented to curb the occurrence of party houses or to address associated behaviour. For example, Gold Coast City Council established a short-term accommodation task force in 2010 and the making of various local laws, example noise laws and licensing regime for short-term accommodation. Uh, the state has already undertaken the following actions in this regard. The Police Powers and Other uh, Responsibilities Amendment Act 2014 now provides additional police powers to deal with out-of-control events and out-of-control behaviour. Similar events and behaviour may occur at party houses and the Local Government Amendment and Other Legislation Amendment Act of 2012 provided new powers for local governments to introduce local laws that may make the owner of a residential property liable to a penalty because of excessive noise regularly emanating from the property. The holiday letting industry has also recognised this issue, introducing a self-regulatory code of conduct which prevents the, advertisement, the advertisement of party houses amongst other things. While commendable, 
This also means that it is difficult to accurately quantify the number of party houses actually in operation, as there is no official or unofficial record. In late 2013, the Department of State Development, Infrastructure and Planning commenced work to identify how party houses could be better regulated in land use, planning and development. To inform this work, discussions were held with Queensland Tourism Industry, councils, the Local Government Association of Queensland uh, and affected South East Queensland local governments, including Gold Coast Council, Redland Shire Council, Sunshine Coast Council uh, and Noosa City Council. The provisions in this bill complement police powers that are already in place to deal with behavioural issues related to party houses. The provisions proposed in this bill will empower local governments to regulate party houses from a planning and development perspective. That is, where local governments choose to act, party, house, party houses will require development approvals to operate. These provisions are not mandatory. A local government can opt in by amending its planning scheme uh, or by making a temporary local planning instrument. The state is not imposing unnecessary new regulation, but providing councils with a mechanism um, if they need it. I'm confident that the proposed laws will not affect people who are doing the right thing. People renting out premises for the, spe for the specific purpose of holding parties are in effect uh, uh, running a business, a booming business. Everyone else who runs a business has to get approval, and so should they. The amendments provide a definition of party house a separate and distinct definition from other uses such as short-term accommodation. This will mean that a defined party house may be accessible development which will require development approval in order to operate. A local government will be able to identify a party house restriction area in its planning scheme. The effect of this party house restriction area is to make, make it clear that any residential do, uh, dwelling in that area um, that does not and should never have had the right to operate as a party house uh, will no longer um, be allowed to unless otherwise approved by that local government authority. The party house restriction area is not intended to remove development rights, rather, rather the underlying principle is that a residential dwelling can be lawfully used to host parties and events. However, a residential dwelling is not intended to be a function centre or an event centre, as we've seen uh, the case in some some properties, particularly in the member for Mudrabar's electorate and the member for Mermaid's uh, electorate, um, those venues are quite separate and quite distinct uh, and require separate development approval as, as they should. These provisions mean that local government can decide if and how to regulate a party house uh, on a use in a way that is locally appropriate. A local government can determine to apply these provisions to all or part of its planning scheme. In some cases, the problems may only relate to small pockets where the activities repeatedly occur. Given a local government has the ability to apply the provisions to just part of its planning scheme area, it, it can and will be business as usual uh, for the rest of its area. Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm pleased to um, stand in the House tonight and speak in support of uh, these, this uh, legislation. Uh, I'm particularly pleased that um, after some uh, 18 months of negotiation and discussion with uh, both the member of for Mermaid and particularly the member for Mudrabar, uh, with, uh, the depart the, with um, a broad range of discussion across a number of departments and, and other councils, uh, that we've been able to come up with a, a very strong and practical solution to this issue, uh, particularly uh, as it's had significant impact uh, on amenity uh, for other residents in the area who work hard. Uh, and it's only right and proper that as a government uh, we should respect the rights of others. Uh, and I'm pleased to be part of a government that's actually finally doing something about tackling these issues. I'm also pleased that as a government uh, that we're tackling uh, the, uh, the whole range of issues that we saw uh, created by the previous government, uh, where we saw layer upon layer of red tape and green tape unnecessarily uh, placed upon the development industry, uh, such that uh, the construction industry in Queensland uh, just about came to a halt. Uh, and the word that we're getting now um, all over Queensland is that, uh, that our planning reform agenda is working, um, uh, that industry is delighted with the changes that this government has brought, uh, and so it's my great pleasure um, to uh, support the bill this evening. Thank you. Call the member for Keppel.